Hi, I'm Phil Constantine, and on this Travels with Phil, we're going to the American Precision Museum in Windsor, Vermont. And this is a museum for precision machine tools. Now, this is the building it's in. The building has been around for a long time. Started out as a, a rifle company where they made guns. And then eventually over the years, uh, it, it worked its way through various incantations or incarnations, I should say. And then eventually it became a, a museum from a guy who worked at the museum. But some people say this is even better or worked at the Smithsonian. Some people say this is even better than the Smithsonian when it comes to the uh, subject of uh, precision machine making tools. And here's a video. With Phil continues in Windsor, Vermont. And we are at the Precision Museum. That's about all kinds of, they used to make rifle things here. This is a rifling machine, appropriately enough. A little video here shows you what they do. What rifling is, is you put the barrel in there and it uh, puts little grooves in it that make the bullet spin and that makes it go straighter. Think of a football player throwing a football. That's why they call it a spiral, is because it sort of spins in the air and that helps it get there straighter. Lots of other equipment here. And in fact, the entire building is just loaded with all kinds of stuff. But lots of parts for all kinds of famous uh, rifles, handguns were made here, Springfield rifles included. They didn't make them all here, and not all the parts either, but a lot of the parts. And here's an example. Uh, here at the uh, Precision Museum. The Enfield Rifle, which is a uh, fairly famous, primarily made for the British government, says this uh, was made here. These rifles bear a crown on the lock plate, per but they use machinery purchased from American firms, soon made their own. And then I have a lot of uh, pictures here of the various uh, tools and uh, rifles in this particular place. It started as a rifle a manufacturing facility, so they have lots of rifles, but they make lots of other things. One of the differences between the old handmade stuff and the modern uh, way of doing things is what's called precision interchangeable parts. When you started having machines that could make the parts, they could make the same part exactly the same over and over and over again. And that led to the concept of interchangeable parts. Used to be if you had a problem with your a machine or a rifle, as an example, if one piece broke, you would have to do some adaptations for replacement parts because they wouldn't always fit because they were just sort of handmade, hand hammered, hand uh, scraped, etc. So there was no guarantee that they would fit precisely in the equipment that you're going to use. So that was one of the big innovations in the Industrial Revolution, was being able to do this. And they've often said that this is one of the reasons why the North had an advantage over the South in the American Civil War is because they had so many factories where they could do these kinds of things. Here's another video. This is how you make threads on nuts and bolts. The little grooves inside there, that's what etched the uh, threads in. Tool and die is sometimes what they're called. Had very uh, hard teeth in there and as you put the uh, the bolt in there it would twist it and that would cut the grooves into it and thus making it, you know, a threaded bolt. Lots and lots of other things. Uh, you look at these things, you go, oh, okay, that makes sense. Whereas if you hadn't seen them before, you'd wonder, well, how do, how do they make these kinds of things? So it took a lot of ingenuity, a lot of uh, brain power on the parts of the people uh, who uh, manufactured, uh, originally made these things, and then finding uh, improvements on them. That's why there's lots of patents on these kinds of things. And uh, very patents for very specifics. Now, they also have a lot of models here, and this is a model of... Uh, how lots of different pieces of equipment work. So here's a video I shot of the little model display that all work. All right, this is supposed to be a demonstration of how some things work. So let's see if it works. There we go. In the back. Cool. 
So all the surely other machines start working here. These are all samples of what the big machines look like. That is a complicated piece of equipment. Now it also shows you what size a person would be. Amazing the detail that these people had. There you go. And then here are some of the older, just regular household items. Travels with Phil continues. This is still at the Precision Machine Shop. Now this shows several different things. An electric toaster, egg beater, hair clipper, apple peeler, sewing machine, uh, typewriters. All right, so this is an old electric toaster right here. I actually remember seeing one like this at my grandmother's house. Old egg beaters. I may still have one of those. This is a hair clipper. And you just literally go... And that would cut right there. This right here is an old apple peeler. Stick the apple where the wooden part is right there. And just turn it and it would peel all off. Old sewing machines. Now this sewing machine right here is uh, 1850 Elias Howe. This one over here is a Wilcox and Gibbs from 1910, right there. Now this is what I think is the coolest looking one. This is a Franklin typewriter patented 1891, 1891. They've actually gone to so these designs again, so the curved keyboards for a better positioning of the hand so you don't get carpal tunnel. And then this is an old Underwood from somewhere between uh, 1908 and 1920. And I, I don't know if I ever used this. I think I used one that came a little bit after that. But I think I think those are cool. And no, they didn't change the designs for carpal tunnel. <laughs> That's just made it easier for the mechanism to work. So lots of different people made sewing machines other than Singer. Uh, Singer just had a really good uh, design and made it inexpensively and durable. So these are all kinds of different things. Watchmaking, uh, be it from kits, tools, and handmade uh, things, but you know, precision instruments that did exact, you know, certain things. Uh, lots of different things. Uh, one of the reasons why there was so much uh, call for cattle uh, in the early, in the mid 1800s was these belts that you see that ran all the equipment. That some of them, you know, would be 40, 50, 100 feet long, but they had to have something that was durable and it was flexible. And that's where leather was used to make the belts that powered all this equipment. So, uh, there, you know, you, you never know what's going to go into uh, something, and that's why there was a lot of uh, buffalo hunting and the raising of uh, cattle in the uh, central part of the United States early on, more so for the leather in, in many cases than for the meat that was inside. So lots and lots and lots of different pieces of equipment here, and this is right on the border between Vermont and New Hampshire in Windsor, and uh, not too far from Mount Ascany and uh, it is a very very interesting place now we get into some more modern stuff uh, they had bomb sites the, the the norden bomb sites from world war ii which was a big innovation this is an optical comparator a turret lathe that uh, you spin things around and then then cut the edges out or cut the inside and various uh pieces of optical equipment here as well. And then the outside of the building, the building's in pretty poor shape. Uh, the equipment inside is doing fairly well, but it's right on the edge of a waterfall and a dam. And the reason why is because that powered all of the equipment inside. The uh, water power would turn those uh, water wheels, which would turn the leather belts, which would turn the machines. The American Precision Museum.
Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up by clicking on the button below. You're welcome to leave comments below as long as the language is family friendly. And finally, if you'd like to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the button over on the bottom right hand corner. Thank you again for watching.